Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be doing part three of the summer fire alarm upgrades, which is adding a beacon outside. About a week ago, I did the part two video. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't. I'll try and link it, but I probably forget honestly. But basically what I did in that video was I installed this pole station right here and this notification appliance. Check out that slick conduit work, by the way. But anyways, what I did is I ran conduit from uh, that device over there and it just comes all the way over. I put a junction box there because I was planning to do this project and that should make things a whole lot easier. But um, again, opposite that corner, we go outside is the soffit on the outside of the house. And basically what I'm planning to do is run wire over here and add a beacon right about there. And the reason I'm choosing there and not right outside of this door is because um, this door, even though this is where the beacon's supposed to be, because uh, if you're not familiar with East Coast standards, many jurisdictions here have a requirement that a red beacon is used to indicate the location of the door that is closest to the fire alarm enunciator or fire alarm panel. Um, so, of course, that would be this door right here. However, if you put the beacon here, nobody can see it when they're coming in the driveway. So if you leave it right there, it shows that this door is the one uh, and you can see it from all directions. Now, of course, this is going to be quite difficult because... Um, you know, this is a finished area, so I might have to do some drywall discovery. But either way, let's go ahead and get started. This right here is the beacon I'm using. It's a Tomar model 4095S-1280. It's a micro strobe style beacon. These are wicked common for fire alarm beacon uh, applications around here. Here's a couple other really common styles. This right here is another Tomar micro strobe. This is an Amzico SL style beacon. And then this right here is a huge beacon that's manufactured by tons of companies. But uh, today I'm using this because I have a couple of these already. So this is a duplicate. I don't like putting things that I only have one of outside because in the event it gets damaged or weathered or something like that, um, then it's no longer really that collectible. But since I have a bunch of these, this one's cool to put outside. This one's already damaged. The uh, pipe thread is broken. So this is what it's supposed to look like but um this one here got sheared off somehow this is how i got it but uh this is what i'm going to be installing so i have to mount this somehow a while back back in january you might remember a video where i put this up on my shed which didn't make much sense because there's no fire panel in the shed but um i mounted it on this little plate here and i just use silicone as kind of a glue the problem is silicone melts uh, at a very low temperature at least around here when it gets sunny so the silicone just kind of fell off i'll try and put in a picture of what it looked like but uh, i need something a little stronger so this right here is some actual adhesive this is liquid nails heavy duty uh, i had to pay an extra dollar for the heavy duty version so it was waterproof but um hopefully this is a little more uh you know strong because i know silicone isn't really used as glue but this is actually an adhesive so that's a fairly generous spreading of uh, liquid nails. The thing I've learned about liquid nails is that it's kind of bad if you put a little bead on because the bead uh, takes a while to dry. But more importantly, the thicker the bead, the less secure the joint is because then it's more just a soft joint. So you kind of want to spread it across the surface area more like this. So now I'm going to put this cover plate on and then center it. You can see there's this little rubber thing. So there's no uh, risk of the wires getting chafed. But uh, I'm going to push this on and then kind of rub it in there. And then within 24 hours, this coating should be dry and we can put this up. So I'm up here in the attic. And the first thing I want to say is it's hot as heck up here. Uh, going up here in summer is not fun. But um, you might be wondering why we're in the attic. For context, the attic is nowhere near the garage. The garage is on the complete other side of the house. The reason we're up here is because we're going to analyze how the, uh, the little fascia thing on the front is built. So... We can go ahead and take a look at the soffit here. Even though we're on the other side of the house, it's still framed the exact same way. So it's always helpful to get a little look as to what we're dealing with here. So currently, if we get a little bit closer, try not to fall through the floor. You can see here that big white piece of wood is the fascia. Then there's that little um, plastic thing that has holes in it. I'm not sure what, what, what it's really called. And then of course we have the soffit right there. So that's where we're mounting our uh, strobe. And I guess the good news is the soffit looks like it's fairly accessible. I suppose when we go ahead and take a look at the outside, um, it might be a little bit more difficult, but um, I think the plan here is to drill up and then try and run a wire over whatever joist there is here and then uh, hopefully minimize ceiling damage. So I'm on a ladder here. You'll have to ignore the fact that my soffit's really dirty, but um, I think I'm gonna open up this plate here. This thing's already cracked, so I'm gonna try and uh, get these nails out and see if I can access the inside. My hope is that 
the inside of this thing will be just like a hollow cavity and then i can literally just fish right over the uh, ceiling joists and over to my box but uh, i'll be back when i remove this here's thing. the inside of the soffit you can see there's actually joists that divide this soffit up so it's not hollow inside there is insulation though but honestly that's fine because if we go ahead and use the screwdriver as sort of a gauge you can see it ends there um, that means that the joist is about right there, so we'll just put the beacon on the other side of that and fish into the garage. Here on the inside, I'm gonna cut out a little access hole with this little blade here, just so I can kind of get a better idea of what's going on back here. Hopefully it'll be fairly straightforward to just run a piece of conduit over here and then somehow get the wire up, over, and then down into the soffit. Thank God for the oscillating multi-tool. I was just cutting this by hand and I realized I had this, so. <laughs> So the uh, little thing is cut out. I'm gonna try and get this out safely so that way, holy shit, there's a wire up there. It's a good thing I didn't cut that. Um, I guess that's why you don't use the jab saw. So there it is. You can see I have a joist up there, so I have to see how I can get over Go ahead and enlarge the hole, which is kind of annoying, but it's just drywall, so it's no problem. Uh, you can see I've drilled up. There's actually this obnoxious sheet of plywood, which makes this a whole lot more difficult because originally my light will stay on. The plan was if this plywood wasn't here, this joist here right above it would just be the soffit. But now I have to drill up above this and that makes fishing a lot more difficult too. But um, it's starting to seem a little difficult without doing too much damage, but I still have confidence that we can get it done. I'm on the other side of the soffit and now I'm gonna drill a hole. Again, I'm not gonna drill it too big with like a spade bit or something just cause I might need to patch this, but. So I'm here in the attic again, just to help visualize where we're at right now. So this is the piece of plywood I was complaining about. And um, of course there's this piece of wood above it. We've just drilled through this layer. So we've gone up and now there's a hole, and then now we have to get the wire to do a U-turn and then go into the soffit there, which doesn't sound that complicated, but it's actually quite hard. I'm starting to think of a plan B in the event that this doesn't work out, which is very possible. Um, of course, this is the soffit, and ideally I want the beacon there just because I think that's the most low-profile place. But if I can't get that to work, then I can also... Again, if you were to look under this piece right here, under the plywood, there's a joist that runs this way. If I just went through the joist, I could just mount it on the uh, the wall outside, which also works just fine, and it's a lot easier, but hopefully we can get this to work. Hey guys, so at this point I've moved on to plan B. It's been a couple days now, and this has been a very rage-inducing process. Pretty much nothing has gone to plan. There's been a lot of different surprises, obstructions, uh, especially since I can't see how this part of the house is built since it's all covered in drywall. Um, so at this point, I'm just going to mount the beacon on the wall directly adjacent to this, um, which honestly makes a lot of sense to do. Probably just easier to do it that way because there's no way feasibly I'm going to get a wire up and then back down to do a U-turn. I mean, that's not going to work unless I do a whole lot more damage, which I'm not trying to do. And unfortunately, in the real world, when things don't go to plan, you just have to figure out how to do it another way. And this is the other way. So I went ahead and drilled through. This is so thick on um, this wall it's just been shockingly thick so i had my spade bit right which i'll try and pull it out and then the spade bit which is this part here i can't really pull it through um but that went all the way through and i still wasn't through the wall so then i had to add one of these attachments and then i wasn't through so i had to add another and another and finally after like a bunch of these i was able to get through i'll go down the ladder and show you the other side and you can see there's lots and lots of dust from the many attempts um which i'll have to patch so over on the other side, you can see our spade bit has come through, which is very exciting. There is a smaller hole because uh, I drilled that first, not realizing how deep this wall was. Uh, and then I just sent the spade bit right through. But either way, that's fine. I'm not sure which hole I'll put the beacon on. I might put it on the smaller one, which is why I ran that little wire to use as a temporary fish tape. But um, we'll see. So I'm going to go ahead and take off this speaker strobe temporarily. This garage door makes a really nice work table, which is kind of nice. I guess the one part of this that kind of works out is the fact that I don't think I'm going to need to run conduit from here to here because this ceiling is kind of hollow. Uh, so hopefully I can just punch out this knockout and then use the ceiling as kind of a raceway. Go straight into there and then just patch this drywall and be good to go. So I've just decided to open another ceiling section to help me fish because there is a joist right here. 
and there's a piece of flashing right here or not flashing uh, whatever this is so it's really difficult to get up there but since it's already drywall and i already have to patch one decided to open this but look at this this is why i choose to use an oscillating multi-tool because there was romex right here and uh, had I used a jab saw and just went up there and started cutting, it's very possible that these wires could have been damaged. But I used an oscillating multi-tool. I was very careful, so these wires are undamaged. But um, either way, now I do have to run this wire very carefully that way. Just pull that through, and then hopefully we can just feed it right through that hole, and it'll be pretty streamlined from here. Here's our wire, goes up into the box, then into the ceiling, and then out to the new strobe. You can see there's no actual connections in this box. Uh, it's just a bunch of scrap wire. I always leave a lot of extra scrap in case I need to run a little extra wire, move something around a little, something like that. But now let's go ahead and install the beacon. So here's the box I'm using. This is one of those outdoor single gang boxes. I like using these. Um, to mount it, you can use these little flanges on the side, but I don't really want to do that because I want the holes as close as possible. So I'm going to drill out these with a drill. So I'm going to go ahead and feed the wires through the hole in the middle. I also put some caulk on the outside uh, just to help this seal up better against the wall. But now I'm going to go ahead and put in my screws. Here's the beacon. Of course, this is a four conductor wire, so I've capped off the audible side, although I have this in the future. So in case I wanted to put a horn strobe or something out here, it's possible. I have put some caulk around the outside. It's not very good, but I'll probably redo that in a little bit. And also I do low-key need to clean this. But other than that, it's time to put this thing up and finish this up. So there's the beacon itself. You can see it's installed up there. I think it does look pretty nice. Of course, I had planned for it to be on the uh, awning over there, but this works perfectly fine. So now the only thing left to do is tie this beacon into the existing system here and then also patch these two holes. All right, so the rest of the system is now back intact. If we go outside, our beacon is now installed up there. Try and film it when the system goes off. However, these don't show up that well on camera. So let's go ahead and activate the system. And there's our beacon. It is certainly flashing. That's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. Please do like, comment, and subscribe. As you can see, the beacon is now up there. It's a very region-specific thing. I'm planning to do a video explaining the beacon code shortly. I did one last year, but it's a little outdated, so I'd like to do one with new information. Look for that in a later video. Other than that, thank you for watching once again, and take care.